Okay, wonderful, lovely Sunday, end of August. And uh, learned something on our little trip. Ended up driving the last couple miles with my bumper literally an inch or so off the ground. It would not raise. I uh, can't see it now, I cleaned. But uh, you can see it's raised there. There's something that didn't readily, uh, wasn't readily available. I couldn't get it in the driveway. I'm on, a, on quite a steep grade. As you can see, the, they're right aired up. They've been like this since Sunday the 28th today, I think it is. And I aired them up on Tuesday morning, and they are still aired up. So we're not leaking from there. It would not go up. The compressor was going mental. So compressor noes functione means it doesn't work. So I haven't been in here in a couple of days after our trip. Had a few things go bad. This compressor is one of them. That's what happens when stuff sits around. It goes bad, and when it's old, it sits around. Whoop! I see something I gotta grab. That is a little cap. And what it is, folks, in a pinch, and people can okay, all get the lock off plates and and things like that. Whoop! Here, my phone's going nuts. But if you ever get in a pinch, you haven't got any. Let's see if I can get in there to show you. Let's zoom on in there. Oh, it doesn't like that. On the bottom of the tank, there's the little tank. I'm going to replace on that. And you see on the bottom, looks like a tire valve. This is not focusing very well, sorry to say. Does that make it focus? Oh, okay. There's a little tire valve there. It is right there. Pushing the hoses in the way. It's right there. And this is the cap that was on it. See your regular Schrader valve. Look at that. You can pull the valve stems out. Very handy. All I did was I had my shop air and I hit the air on that valve with the compressor on. So all the solenoids were doing the solenoidy things. And that lifted the coach up. So you get in a pinch, you don't have any of the isolators, kits, or anything in your coach yet, and your compressor just is straight up not working. That's what you do. Gets you, gets you home. Uh, well, in my case, I got home with the back bumper on the ground. I look like a gasser with the front end up way in the air and a back dragon. Anyhow, I got her home. Would not go in the driveway. Back bumper on the ground. Wouldn't go in. So parked her in the road. Of course, the city, being as the cities do, I'm not supposed to park this thing in the street. It's got to be in the driveway. So I left it overnight. I thought that's fine. And the next day I hit that air, raised it right up. And it's been aired up ever since. So I don't think I have a solenoid problem. I don't think I have any air leaks. It has not budged. I put it in the uh, in the um, lock position on my electro level one, which is what I have here, being a, 70, a later 76. So, you got the box. This, is done. Now I've posted out there in the world of what I'm going to do. I might have a cabinet modification coming my way. I need to get behind here anyway because I do have a water leak in my water system I haven't been able to use because there's a the water comes out from under this cabinet here so right into the carpet. I don't know where from but this is what I'm going to replace it with. 
And also my plans are to add another tank so that I could use external air and use a bypass switch. These are uh, Viair 444Cs. They come as a pair. The main reason I got these though, I'm going to tell you, I got such a good deal on these from that uh, jungle outfit online, if everybody knows who they are. It had a minor problem. One foot had a bend. And let me tell you, I couldn't turn these down. I got such a good deal on them because of that little minor bend, which a couple whacks of a hammer and that's, that's took care of. That's perfect. These are otherwise unused brand new. You got to check their, uh, you got to check on their, uh, their, um, always when you're looking at something, there's all, if you look below, you'll always see oh, one new and then they have a used. You always look at that used one. I've only ever had one item that I got off of there. Their warehouse deals, they call them. Only had one where the item that it's usually a returned item. That's what these are. And uh, one item, it was ruined. The guy, whoever returned it, they they was the uh, tool for the um, torsion bars. It was junk. It was bent beyond use. And they took it back. Not a problem. And then I picked up another one. So I have to somehow cram those into here. All figured out and uh, had my door up there I whoever did the cabinetry in this thing because this cabinetry has been redone or something done to it I don't know if this is original or what it was done about 15 years ago whoever the previous owner or there when it was imported I'm in Canada it was imported into Canada from the Midwest somewhere I have paperwork I just can't remember where it came from Illinois or somewhere up in that area so but the, the I don't know what kind of glue they use but the glue is just failing it's just falling apart it's this one cabinet over there failure point this door fell straight off going to use some real wood glue on this and get it put back together and uh, get this in might have to punch that wall back don't know don't know if this is how it was and then wire in this pair of uh, compressors and I might uh, have to find a way to vent this better for better uh, cooling. And up front, other failure point, stupid fridge. This has got to go. Don't work. Last time I used this coach, it worked fine on electric. I did not use the propane because I don't like the propane fridges. <clears throat> and my propane valve leaks when I open her. Old cars, old things, always problems. Oop, there goes my Schrader valve. I am on a pretty steep hill here. And you can see I got the Phytech up there. And I got the electric fan under the hood. All the couches back together. As you can see, I've got a extra step. There's a reason for that. It's got to come up from the back. It's not sealed down because uh, I actually have to make that extra step a little bit more extra. Just left it straight up and that's good. Uh, that's because we got this finally done. I have not done any uh, postings or any more content of getting it to this point because I'm actually going to try to do a proper job. Today I just wanted to post a little thing onto my little amateur youtube video channel as you can see the electric fans those things worked awesome they did they cooled this thing right down i saw on a steep hill on a 34 celsius degree day which is i don't know, do the math but that's pretty hot pretty hot 
and um, 190 climbing a good hill under about oh I'd say almost half throttle so it was working pretty good still have the HEI in for now and I switch that out for a um, gonna use the timing control I've been told not to but well I got the distributor and I, I just think being able to adjust the timing that way would be awesome got the headers in those things really 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 peak up they pick up the heat under here unbelievably so I may wrap those in that uh, heat wrap stuff that volcanic bolt cloth stuff I think that's the th I think that's what I'm gonna do but I've heard that's not the best thing to do it could damage the headers I'll do a little more research before I make up my mind on that one, but they do increase the underhood temperature quite a bit. But I could not get um, exhaust donuts for the manifolds I was going to use because I wasn't ready to put the headers on, but I ended up having to put these on. And I had to cobble on my original exhaust, which I did not want to do, but I just ran out of time. Because I wanted to use this thing once for the summer. I'd already lost out on one campsite. And, well, the second campsite of second of three that I was going to. Uh, basically stayed overnight and was a couple hours. And that was it. So, here we are. This is in. Phytech works awesome. When it's hot, I hit that key. Don't touch it. I lean over and, and turn the key and this thing just fires right up. Not a problem. When it's cold, it cranks a few times and away it goes. So I don't I believe it's a good upgrade. We'll see long term. I've only had a short amount of run time on this. I've put maybe 150 miles on it. That's about it. So time will tell. And this little bracket dealy for the throttle linkage that worked quite well no issues at all just had to get a fitting had to get one fitting to work pick that up off that jungle site too and they paid like 30 dollars for it as well it was uh, quite a good deal worked fine the original one i would have had the original bracket i would have the monkey with and cut and the i still have that thing so that worked out good. Need a new throttle cable though. Look at that sucker's all peeling apart and one little tang holding it on there is broken. So I'll have to change that. Have to raise the hood a little more. Did not do my math mathematicians very good. So I had to use this piece of rubber hose to space it so it wasn't rubbing on the top there. The whole lid was going wiggle wiggle wiggle. <laughs> So that worked out okay, except it let a lot of heat into the coach. And I don't have the dash AC hooked up. It's just running the generator with the roof AC. And then on the way home, we had issues with fuel delivery. Have a Carter Electric... Um, is it Carter? Yeah, Carter Electric pump on the back is a feed pump to the Phytec uh, fuel pump pump thing can't remember what they call it but it's their second generation hmm? hyper fuel hyper fuel there you go it's not their current generation which is a much larger one but it's a hyper fuel i bought this setup a couple years a couple three years ago and i just finally got it put on here because this whole thing cost me a fortune but uh so we got uh, that going and uh it i put the clamp onto the fuel line from the tanks and I believe it was sucking air. So I pulled that off, put a proper clamp on, tightened that up, and that seemed to get me going. It was almost like vapor locking in the heat. And I pulled that off, and there was no fuel there, and it made a sucky, hissy sound. So I think that might have been it. It was just not pulling the fuel out of the tanks. Got that done, and then the Phytech, other than that, it worked fine. Well, anyways, August 28th, little tiny little 
clip it and uh, that's all I have to say. So some more uh, content and uh, I'm going to get to the final build showing exactly everything that went into this. And uh, instead of before this, it'll be after. Okay, ciao for now.